Hello there and welcome to another video by the MXQ project. So finally we are proud to announce that Raka has released a stable release for the MXQ SF5. So this means that it brings the latest version of Raka and it should be stable, it should be smooth and most things should run pretty well. The Oldroid C1 for example has a set of 5 processor and that handles retro gaming pretty well and this should be very similar to that release. Now we played a small part in actually getting this running. We donated hardware to the Raka team as well as the RetroArch team a number of months ago now. Big thanks to the Raka team for doing this. I'm really, really over the moon by this development. So let's move on to the first part. I want to show you where to get your files from, how to install it onto an SD card, and how to boot it from your MXQ box. So let's go to racker.tv, and then all we need to do is select Get Racker. And then Get Racker again. And then select which operating system you're using. So I'm using Windows. And then here you'll see all the different ARM base boards that Rack is available for. It's even available for PC, Raspberry Pi, and so on. Here's the SF5 box just here. But it's also available for SF2, S905, etc. So the hd q just there is the one I want to use. There's also available for the M201C, MXQ B-Link, M201D, MK808B+. When we move on further through the tutorial, if it doesn't boot, then you can come back and download and try these other files. So download the one you think is going to work for me to HEA and Q. You're also going to need a program called Win32 Disk Imager. It's a really simple program, it's just an executable. You can get that from anywhere. If you want to get that from us, just go to the mxqproject.com forward slash files. And then head down to where it says Win32 Disk Imager. Download that program just there and install it. Now, what you need to do is you need to grab your Racker file just here and you need to make sure you unzip it. I'll include an unzip tool just in the description if you don't have one. Just make sure once you've unzipped it, it says .image at the end of the file because it will be a .gz once you've downloaded it from Racker. Now, here's a good time. Now you need to insert your SD card. So make sure to class 10, decent speed as well and then select it. So mine's on device H. And then what we need to do now is we need to select the Raka image file that we've just downloaded and unzipped. So mine's just here. Raka SL5 HDA and Q. And then click open. And all we need to do now is click write and then click confirm. Now this is going to take a few minutes. Now all we need to do now is move over to our MXQ box and then simply put the SD card in and then what we need to do is just apply power. We can move over to the next bit. So welcome to the Racker main menu. Those of you who have ever had a PS3 you probably recognize this sort of layout. It's very similar to the PS3 menu. It's it's quite easy to use, it's quite easy to get around, but there is a lot of settings in here. Even settings that I'm not aware of, that you guys are probably just going to have to take a bit of time to actually sort of get used to and just, just play around with it and, and, you know, like anything, just learn how to use it. So, there's no ROMs in pre-installed with Raka, so you're going to have to add your own. So you can go to cool, cool ROMs, maybe Emu Paradise or some other place to actually download your ROMs. You don't actually get, have to get any specific to this hardware or like a, a, a ROM is pretty much, uh, you know, universal in, in a way. So I've got my ROMs currently stored on my Transcend USB stick. So I've inserted that into the MXQ box and I can access that from just this load content menu icon here. So if I go in there, then I can go down to just the start directory, and then this is my transcend USB stick just here, and go in there, and here's my game ROMs here. Now if I click on that, then I can go into load archive, and then here's all what we would call our, our cores. So these are all the systems that we've got available. So here's Sega Genesis, if I click on that, and then what will happen is it will start to load the game.
Now, I don't want to play on that right now because I want to show you a bit more about this system. So, just to exit out of that, I'm using an actual keyboard here. So, just escape on your keyboard. Obviously, you may be wanting to set up a joypad. Um, I've just got a keyboard here. So, right now, you can just go into... Um, Yeah, that's it. So you go down to like um, input, so you can change all your sort of uh, you joypad setup. So you would use the input binds and stuff like that, and you can um, set up your controller using these. This system is here. Um, it's you know it is a case of looking through it how you want to set it up. You can set it up for different ROMs, different um, cores even. You can so your N64 core would have a different joypad set up to your PlayStation One core, etc. Uh, so as well as that, to transfer ROMs, obviously I'm using my USB stick here. You can also transfer ROMs onto the memory card. You can store all that on there. So you want, obviously want to connect to the internet because. The only way we're going to be able to do this is by transferring it through a process called Samba. Now, I'm not going to cover Samba in this video. If you want to learn about that, I'll leave a link in the description. But Samba in is basically the way we use Windows to talk to Linux devices. And what you'll do is, once you Samba in, you'll be able to see a bunch of different folders. And you can just store your ROMs in there and you can access it through these menus, etc. So to access... Uh, uh, your your Wi-Fi, for example, we can go down to settings just here. So we we'll just move over to this um, uh, gear symbol, and we can just go down to Wi-Fi, and then uh, it will scan for your Wi-Fi, and then you can enter into your in, into your um, passcode for your Wi-Fi. So this is mine here. I can go into there. I don't want to because I'm connected to the um, to Ethernet at the moment. So if you do want to connect to Ethernet. You can just simply plug in the Ethernet cable and it will just connect straight away. And then you can samber in and then you can transfer your ROMs and store them however way you like. So these are all our cores. Like I said before, we've got all these different cores available. So we've got Game Boy. Um, there's quite a few new ones here as well. So we've got Mupin 64. There's a different N64 core here as well. We've got a few PC Engine. We've got Quake 1. That and uh, we've got SNES cores and Sega cores you know there's a couple of the same ones some will just play certain games different and certain games better we've got ZX Spectrum core and so on so just make sure you're picking the right ROM for your cores so obviously I played Sonic the Hedgehog before which is for the Genesis or the Mega Drive if you're in the UK and you can just use this one here um, so you know, uh, this is just a brief overview of what this is a this is capable of. But at the end of the day, Lacquer is the RetroArch interface that we can also use on, say, the MXQ Retro Gaming Experience build that we released a couple of months ago for the um, for LibreLec, Kazax LibreLec for the SL5 and SL5. So this is, a, you know, it's a similar system. It's actually it's pretty much the same system. Uh, this is just all rolled into one for using the retro front end we've also got here uh, netplay as well i think we've briefly covered that on our updated version for the mxq gaming experience i'm not going to show you how to set it up here but yes you can play online multiplayer with your friends on the mxq box how cool is that it's very cool i think uh yeah and it runs pretty well as well i've, I've played a few sessions with scott on the um, netplay and here we are it's uh, ready to go it, it can takes a bit of getting used to actually setting it up but you know you know like anything you know it takes a bit of time but it, it works perfectly fine just make sure your internet's uh, pretty quick i think that i think that's the main issue that we had but because i've got slow internet connections scott's got a fast internet connection so i think that caused those issues in the past but there we go. Uh, yeah, so that is Lacquer, really. This is the Lacquer system. It's very stable. You shouldn't have too many issues with it. It's the, the most stable release I have. And as well as that, you're going to get updates as well, I should imagine. Because it it says online update here. So if I try and update it, 
It should, yeah, so there's an update there for me. I'm, I'm not going to install that now, but as you can see, we can just, these are automatic updates and it'll install onto the system itself. But yeah, it's a very cool, cool system. Big thanks to the Lacquer team for this because there's a hell of a lot of work on into this. But yeah, so that pretty much concludes this video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you're going to go out and use Lacquer. Uh, it's very safe to dual boot your MXQ box. Um, you should have no issues, it shouldn't break your box or anything like that. Remember, we're running the operating system from the SD card. It's totally separate from your internal storage and anything like that, it shouldn't, it shouldn't hurt it. Even if it weren't to work, it shouldn't hurt it. So thanks for watching guys and we shall see you in the next one.